celebrate what Jesus is doing throughout the nation and rise up to answer His call on your life. To serve the poor, heal the broken, free the captives, and bring joy to those in need. Find hope, encouragement, and motivation through Overcomers TV. This inspiring network features everyday people and ministries across America who are putting God's love in action. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. Hey guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode with the Christian Legal Society. I've got Laquita in the house again, episode number three. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, Pastor Chuck. Come on now. This is the third episode. It's Lakita. Lakita. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Lakita. <laughs> You're reading what you think is there, but it's not there. When you say that, your eyes look at the first two letters, last couple, and it just fills in the blank, you know? Yeah, that's true. I, I was just actually just talking to someone that w- this week about that. I'm editing our magazine, and he, uh, my boss was like, do you print it out and edit it, or do you look at it on the screen? I'm like, I'm so old school, because your eyes will just read what it wants to on the screen. Yeah, if, <laughs> if you Google misspelled words reading, there's a whole paragraph. Every word in it is misspelled. The middle letters what? are twisted, and you can just read through the story like no problem. And uh, it's like a, wow. a Google experiment, you know, but if you can look that up for homework. But speaking of Christian legal society and lawyers, you guys know all about reading volumes and books. And <laughs> just to pass the bar, um, the amount of reading you guys have to do, um, case study, precedences, all that. So mm-hmm. uh, if you don't like reading, you probably wouldn't be a good lawyer, huh? Mm, I don't <laughs> well, know. You argue that. real well. I'll let somebody else do the reading for yeah, you. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. There's kind of ways around I mean, you do have to like reading, though. <laughs> Praise God for audiobooks. That's all I can say. You know? Yeah, that's a new thing. You know, I don't know if there were audiobooks when I was in law school. It's kind of. Well, yeah, I'm super excited so. about our series. We've decided to uh, record the last Friday of every month. And uh, if something important pops up in between now, we can always do a special edition, like a Fox News alert of some kind. But we'll call it yeah. a legal society alert. We'll, Love we'll it. That. Yeah, that's good. So uh, what's on your heart this morning? What's God put on your heart about your world? You know, it's interesting that you asked because I was thinking about that. I was like, oh, as I prepare for today, I was thinking about um, just how we need to be in the body of Christ during this season. There's so many things that's happening in our world right now um, from a, a threat of a government shutdown to even Senator Feinstein just passed away today. Um, yeah. The new Supreme Court term is coming up in a few weeks. Like, um, you know, we have an election coming up. Of course, all of that stuff is probably political to some people, but <clears throat> Christ is a little political. <laughs> yeah. Amen. And again, we talked about a Proverbs 31. Her husband was known at the gates. That's where the policies or politics and the issues for the community and the uh, was discussed. You got, I mean, yeah. as dirty as it is, because it's a dirty business, we got to be involved. So uh, I, there are a lot of Christians that shy away from politics stuff. I, I yeah. And, and I was, what I was thinking about was how I was talking to a friend um, this week about how the body of Christ, we are made to be in the world, not of the world, but in the world. Right. And so God is really asking us to, um, to connect with people on different levels and not just within the four walls of the church. And I think that since the pandemic happened in 2020, Uh, When the church left the building, we literally should have left the building, like never came back in the sense of figuratively, right? We really need to be ministering in different ways. And we can get really comfortable um, with being in the four walls. I know I can. Like, I love my church. I love my church. I love my family and friends at my church. I love huddle, man. We're huddling up. I mean, what's the next play? And then you go out and run it, right? So if this was a football game, it's a holy huddle. But, the, you know, moving those yardsticks means you got to line up, snap the ball and and hit the, you know, the opponent, the, the defense. Right. 
But Christ came to save the world. He came to go into the world uh, to, and he tells us, go into the world and make disciples. Like he came um, to really create change. And I think a lot of times we are so comfortable as Christians um, with with our little world and not creating change. And I had a friend come into town a couple of weeks ago, and this is along the same line. She's also an attorney, which hopefully we can have her on the show at some point. Um, but she does a lot in the uh, in the entertainment industry. And she and I were just talking about how the church is so scared. Like, what you you think that um, the unbelievers are going to rub off on you? Like, the wealth of the wicked is literally laid up for us. We got to go. Like, if they, they need lawyers, you know, they need lawyers. They need um, pastors. They need everyone um, to come alongside them. And so I've just really been thinking about how when tough times come, how we just pray to really just get out of those tough times. And um, I watched a, a video this week and it was, um, uh, I can't remember which pastor it was, but he talked about how God didn't take Daniel at, and the um, three Hebrew boys out of the fire, right? He, he moved and protected them in the fire. Yeah, he was in there with them. Yeah, the fourth one looks like the son of the man. That's awesome. That yeah. And I saw, I heard a devotion last week. It kind of wrecked me because he talked about if God made us fishers of men, he goes, what do you think about when you go fishing? You think about a couple poles, you know, and if mm-hmm. you get a charter boat, you can put like five or six and you're watching all the lines and seeing if you get a hit. He goes, but he's talking about the 12 and then 120 in, in the upper room. He goes, this is a massive fishing expedition. Mm-hmm. And he says they use nets. And they caught 153. And he's like, do you know what the biblical significance of 153 is? He goes, no, it was 153 fish. It was 153. You can't catch 153 with a couple poles. You need a net. Yeah. yeah. And he says, and the net, what are, what is, what's a net made of? The knots. You know what the mm. knots are? It's mm. your relationships. Wow. So the body of Christ. And it just, I got this visual with the net. All those little connections where the knots connect, make a net. That's the church. To get them to do a massive fishing expedition, uh, not just one or two on your pole, but a net. And I'm like, wow, I never looked at evangelism that way before, but it is a, it should be a, and again, you're going to have to get out of the four walls. You might be able to catch one or two if you bring a visitor to church, but you're going to have to catch, if you want a 153, you yeah. Know, yeah. You're going to have to use a net and you're going to have to go out in the deep blue sea, you know, the world. Well, there's a scripture on that about the kingdom of heaven being like a net. Let me see if I can find that real quick. Yeah. Man, that that is just a powerful thing. Like even the parable where um, the where the disciples were out there fishing, and Jesus is like, let's just cast the net on the other side. Like that is look, they're the look, they're the experts. They like we got this. We've been doing this, and that's how we feel in the church. We got this. We've been doing this. We've been saving souls. We had tent revivals. We had Azusa Street. We had all these different things. No, we don't have this. There's a new strategy that God needs us to implement in 2023. Um, Oh, it's Matthew 13, 47 through 52. It says, once again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was let down into the lake and caught all kinds of fish. That's what you basically just said. Yeah. Some are good. Some are, they they separate them. That's the, uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's it. And, all um, kinds of fish. And that's the thing. In the body of Christ, we have all kinds of fish. We are all so different, so you unique. Matthew 13? Mm-hmm. Yeah, Matthew 13. Mm-hmm. All right. And what verse? Uh, 47. Let me turn to it in my actual Bible. Matthew 13, 47 through 52. All right. Zooming in. I'm zooming in. I'm gonna bring it Come up. On. Might as well, might Go as well in the bring word. it up. Yes. We have the Bible study. The kingdom of God is like a jewel merchant. He uses that one. And the kingdom of God is like a fish net cast into the sea, catching all kinds of fish. When it is full, it is hauled onto the beach. The good fish are picked out and put in tub. Mm. Uh, those until huh? those unfit to eat are thrown away. Mm. That's how it will be. When the curtain comes down on history, I wonder what translation I just went on. on Looks like uh, you have an amplifier or something that groups it together. Yeah, let's take a look. Uh, the the message. message, huh? Yeah, I'm not a not a big fan of the message. Somebody was reading from it the other day, but I'm a I'm a new King James version. But I think they're all good. I think mm-hmm. just you know the Hebrew and the Greek, there is not always a 
word for word translation, you know, so it's thought for thought, but the message is definitely over amplified uh, mm-hmm. for emphasis, I guess, just to get you thinking a little bit more. And then, again, I always praise God, the Holy Spirit, whatever you're reading, the Holy Spirit's helping you understand. It. Right. But yeah, but uh, there yeah, it is, that's it right there. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. So uh, the good into vessels, but the, but through the bad away. So it'll be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth, separate the wicked from among the just. Mm-hmm. Cast them into the furnace of fire. They'll be willing and gnashing of teeth. So that's the world and the church. I believe that's a parable. And he also uses wheat and tares, um, good fish, bad fish. Um, you know, and that's when it's all said and done at the end of the football game or the end of the basketball game. When that horn goes off, mm-hmm. there's the home and the visitors. We've got a scoreboard. Sheep and goats is Matthew 25 we'll talk about. Mm. So, yeah, if we don't go, if we don't get turned to bad fish into good fish. You know, having them come, get saved and put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it does it it doesn't end well for those guys. They get thrown into the lake of fire. That should that should st- that should start a fire in you to say, how can we reach yeah. them before that trumpet blows? You know? Yeah, yeah. So my one of my friends and I, we were talking, you know, just about how important it is for us to um, have some uncomfortable times, some uncomfortable seasons. And I'm not telling you to go up in the club if the Lord is not telling you to do that. I'm certainly not that one. But but I am saying right. that we are to go into the places where um, unbelievers are to catch the fish in a lot of different ways. And that can just be at our job. Now, it ain't at my job because we all have a statement of faith. But it, it was at my old job, right? Like, it can be in our jobs. It can be in our family reunions. It can be, you know, in the grocery store. It can be wherever. And I really feel like the Lord is calling us in this season to to take the seven mountains, right? Like, government. We talked about that earlier, just things that are happening. We can't run from those things. We can't just be like, oh, you know, I'm not supposed to deal with politics. Oh, I'm not supposed to deal with what's happening in our schools. If you don't deal with it, who's going to deal with it? We're believers. God has called us to do that. Um, especially as kingdom lawyers, there's so much work for us to do. Yeah. And it's funny because you and I talked Wednesday on the way to church. We were saying, hey, what do we want to do Friday? We were kicking around some ideas of focus, momentum, topics. And as we were walking into church, I felt a call to pray mm-hmm. uh, while we were worshiping. We did that Holy Spirit song. You're, you're you know, welcome here. Francesca Battistelli. Mm-hmm. And, um, and all of a sudden I heard, you know, John 14, 15, and 16. We just read all three chapters out as if Jesus was on stage giving that, mm. that little uh, excerpt to his boys before the night, the night before the cross, right? Wow. That it was like a monologue. And like how many times the translation we were reading was NIV and he uses the Holy Spirit as the advocate. I'm sending you the advocate. Mm. The NIV uses that. And I'm thinking that's exactly what a lawyer is. And that's <laughs> after we got done reading. So here we are, you know, we were praying, what do we want to talk about? And he, and I, it, so advocacy, that's exactly what you guys do. Do you want to piggyback on that? Absolutely, man. I feel like if I was to write a, uh, a dues letter or something, I would probably call it the advocate because Jesus is like the most model advocate there is, right? Like, and as a criminal, a former criminal lawyer, I should say, you can, you can be whatever you want to be as a lawyer, but as a former criminal prosecutor, um, <laughs> <laughs> that's the beauty of it, right? Just versatile. You can just change tomorrow. I think I want to start writing some wills or something, but, um, but no, as a former um, prosecutor, uh, I saw advocacy all the time, and it just really brings to light how Jesus is our advocate, right? He's literally, he has already stopped the sentence from happening, right? He stopped us from being judged whenever we take him on as our personal savior and we accept salvation. But um, as lawyers, we get to advocate for the most vulnerable. And that's really the only time people come to you for real, for real, is when they're in a vulnerable state, unless they're planning their estate. Um, and they're not dying, <laughs> but, <laughs> but <laughs> that's a word for somebody today. Get your things in order. You know what I'm saying? You won't be able to represent yourself on the other side. Somebody's going to have to do that for you. No, but I think advocacy is important because um, as kingdom lawyers, like we are to, man, I wish I could remember that scripture right off the of hand, but we are to, um, we are basically to to stand on behalf of the poor, um, the oppressed, the widows, the orphans, um, the yeah. accused, everyone. And so um, it's just important that we advocate, that we that we really advocate from God's perspective, because God is a God of mercy 
and grace, he's also a God of judgment. People forget that part. Like, you know, so it's important that we have advocates. Um, you never know what a good kingdom lawyer could do for you. <laughs> Amen. And that principle you're talking about standing up for the oppressed and the orphan, the widow, I even, you know, I think it's in Timothy in, in James 127, he says, you know, pure and undefiled religion is this to uh, visit or help the widow and orphan in time of distress and keep yourself unspotted from the world. Mm. I mean, if you're religious about something, you're religious with helping the widows and orphans. And these are the vulnerable, like you talked about, the most vulnerable, especially back in that day, widows had no source of income. The man was the breadwinner. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you know, women can, can you know, go and enter the workplace and, and be a lawyer, rock the world. Yes. And, um, you know, you're still 100% woman too, you mm -hmm. know, and, uh, but in those days, the widows were the most vulnerable because they didn't have any source of income and an orphan especially couldn't provide for himself. But God's like, you want to be religious about something, be religious about that. And um, I don't know if you want to piggyback on that, but there's another verse, I think it's in Psalms, where it says, um, blessed is he who considers the poor, mm -hmm. for the Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. So it's like, if you got the back of the poor, the Lord's got your back. And I think that's so key because a lot of times, um, Psalm 41, Psalm 41. Okay. Let me find that Psalm 41. I'll bring that up. Yeah. Oh yeah. That'd be great. And, Perfect. Yeah. And, you know, uh, have, that's what I love about, you don't have my little this. teeny tiny scriptures, right? <laughs> you can bring it up on the, uh, on the screen. That'd be perfect. Psalm 41. You said, yeah, 41, one. Now I was like to say, Psalm. I don't know. It's just a thing. <laughs> Pussam, the P is silent, like knuckle head. Oh my I could be a knucklehead. Goodness. Head. Pastor Chuck, you didn't went somewhere else today. What did you drink for coffee Blessed this morning? Lord have mercy. <laughs> Blessed is he who considers the poor. The Lord will deliver him in time of trouble. Yeah. The Lord will preserve him and keep him alive, and he will be blessed on the earth. You will not deliver him to the will of his enemies. The Lord will strengthen him on his bed of illness. And you will sustain him on his sick bed. That sounds conditional. Mm -hmm. Blessed is he who considers the poor. You don't consider the poor, you're not going to really be blessed. That's what it sounds like to me. You know, so mm -hmm. I think that the Lord has given us a call to, to look out for the poor, which is why I love the fact that as an attorney, we're required to do pro bono work, which is give away our services for free. I love that. And I do that at our Christian legal aid clinics because it's just like, you never know. I mean, obviously, he's he could be talking about poor in spirit, poor in finances, poor in a lot of stuff. But uh, yeah, we, physically, emotionally, and spiritually poor, right? And that's one of the beatitudes: blessed are those who are spiritually poor, for they will be comforted. You know, yeah, keep going. Yeah, but there's another p scripture that says we will always have the poor amongst us, and so we really need yeah. to consider um, those that have less means than we do, and not forget where we came from. Like I grew up poor. Uh, my parents probably don't like to hear me say it like that because they were hardworking people and we never had any type of like government assistance, but we struggled. Right. We struggled the, the next meal. You sometimes never knew you might be going down grandma's for the next meal. Like, you know, and um, because they were working blue collar jobs and trying to make ends meet. And I know the people who sewed into our lives were and are so blessed. I mean, there was a lady at our church that paid for me and my brother to have piano lessons. Um, there's another person that paid for me and my brother to go to a different school. Um, and so it was just, you have to consider the poor. You really do. And, yeah. and you will be blessed. Amen. Amen. That's what I love about this. You know, um, you know, lawyers get a bad rap, you know, because there are some that are just chasing the money, the ambulance chasers and all that. I guess every profession, even preachers. Right. Uh, you know, I think uh, the top three least trusted people on the planet are car salesmen and pastors are right up there with the uh -huh. car salesmen. So, uh, you know, it's like, you know, Dorothy, when she landed in Oz and the munchkins wanted to know, is she a good witch or is she a bad witch? She's like, well, I'm not a witch at all, you know, but <laughs> I mean, fit in those categories. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, you play the pastor card. They're like, oh, especially if you're on television. Oh, you're one of those TV evangelists. And now I ain't one of those. You know, I'm, we're doing this uh, to outdo some of the kookiness that has been broadcast. You know, they buy the time and 
Uh, they do what they want. Uh, there's really not a lot of ads on Christian television. So it's pay for play kind of thing. So I always sometimes feel like I owe an apology for some of the stuff people might have seen on Christian television. We ha- we've come a long way in the last 15 years. There's a lot of better programming, a lot of good teachers out there, too. But anyway. Uh, yeah, that's so funny because I remember, I, I don't know what me and my pastor were talking about one time, but she was like, I don't like to tell people I'm a pastor. I like to just kind of see how they are first. <laughs> <laughs> stealth. It's going to be stealth like. But, you know, back to being a Christian advocate, a lawyer, we all, uh, my, my pastor used to say, you know, you're a Christian disguised as filling your job title, mm. whatever it is. We talked about the marketplace because that's where the salt and pepper, we talked about this before, the church is a salt shaker. We're all a bunch of salt high-fiving each other. Isn't it great to be salt? And every once in a while, we give a little shout out to the pepper shaker and say, hey, pepper, you want to come over Sunday? It's like, no, man, I'm pepper. I hang out with my people. You hang out with your people. Is you know we're worlds apart, but when salt and pepper gets thrown out in the world on the plate, they mix and mingle. That's where the conversions happen. Mm. That's where it happened in the Book of Acts. It was while they were out there. Then they found some water. They dunked them, and then they hung out at the church with the church that meets at Priscilla and Aquila's house. The church was the people. Now we think the church is the building. Mm. But in, mm. you know, in the Book of Acts, the church. Whenever it talks about the church that meets at you know, so-and-so's house. It was the group of believers. Yeah. That, they were the church. We are the church. We are the body. Anyway, yes. I'm preaching. Here. No, that, look, flow. <laughs> That's what we say at my church, flow. <laughs> Let the Holy Spirit flow through you. <laughs> Amen. That's good. So, again, we're doing this show because we're trying to raise awareness to organizations like yours so people can pray for you. Get in, You are on the front lines. Talk about partnerships, support. And um, unless you want to talk a little bit more about the passing of the senator today, I know she was 90. Um, um, I don't, I mean, you, you, I, I didn't really follow her like that. Um, yeah. But, God, you know, God bless her family and condolences. Three decades, yeah. I think she was serving. And, um, uh, you know, or a lot yeah. of senators, were they lawyers at one point in their life? I know. You know, the, uh, I'm sure, I'm sure. Well, I don't know how many of the percentages, but a, a good number of them uh, are lawyers for sure, and, and congressmen as well. Um, that's kind of like a, you got to be. You want to be a Supreme Court justice, that's for sure. Well, yeah, you do have to be a lawyer to be that. <laughs> it's a different branch of government. <laughs> Any judge needs to be a lawyer. That's man, right. man, but I and a good one, right? And if a good good lawyers don't make it to to sitting on the judge seat, so they're, you know, uh, is the qualities of, of being a good judge until the righteous judge appears. We are supposed to judge. And we talked about that two weeks ago. Most people know the verse judge, not lest you be judged brother. Mm-hmm. But in John chapter seven, verse 24, he says, judge with a righteous judgment. Mm-hmm. He says, don't judge based on appearance, but judge with a righteous judgment. And the righteous judgment is the law. If I want to discern or judge what 12 inches is, I'm going to need a ruler. Yeah. So yeah. the law helps us discern right from wrong, up from down, left from right, right? Cold and hot. I mean, that's discernment. That's not the judgment Jesus was talking about. He was talking about condemnation kind of judgment. Right. But we're supposed to discern. So I think that's a big misconception. But it's it's folks like you that help the jury or, you know, the judge in some cases make a decision. What's the right thing to do here? That's what righteousness means is doing the right thing. And it's got to be a, it should be a win win for everybody unless someone's just flat out wrong and needs to get a spanking butt. You know, <laughs> right. So. Yeah, and you know what? In the body of Christ, the we have the easiest tool to judge. Test the spirit by the spirit. Use the Holy Spirit. Use your discernment, and that's how you that's, that's how you judge. You know, with the Holy Spirit. Um, but you're right. He he just meant in terms of like not judging, as in the final judgment, because God gets the final judgment. Right. You're not you're not rendering a verdict on another person or condemning them. Um, but you are allowed, especially among believers, we should be judging one another in the sense of discerning and helping to decide. We, you know, iron sharpens iron. We're supposed to be helping one another to grow. And um, I, don't, I can't recall which scripture that is, but um, but with believers, it's a different ball game, right? It's a separate judgment than it is for unbelievers. And it says judgment begins in the house of the Lord. That's another standalone verse because mm-hmm. we know better. We should know better. We got the word and the spirit. So, yeah, that's accountability. You know, uh, Cain smarted off to God saying, what am I, my brother's keeper? And if I was God, I would have flicked him off the planet right there. 
I what? love his patient, love his car. Not <laughs> I'm, I'm, not like, dude, you, I'm trying to get you to confess to me. Where's your brother? You know, I know where he's at, but I'm asking you what happened. You know, and he's like, what am I, my brother's keeper? I'm like, man, thank God you are not God. <laughs> Just flick him off the planet. My God. He should have flicked me off the planet a long time ago when I was on the other side, you know, running game. Dean would have never yeah. had a chance for eternal, eternal life, Pastor Chuck. <laughs> I know. Love is patient. Love is kind. God is patient with people. Yeah, yes. Because I know we all know some people that, like, we probably think in the back of our mind, the world would be a better place without that person. But God still yeah, has them here. That's true. Hoping that, again, they, they turn it around. They turn to him and turn it around. Have you heard that song, that song God Turn It Around? Mm, how does it go? God turn it around. Turn it around. I'm going to text it to no. you. It's an amazing song. I know a different song. God is saving someone <laughs> right now. God is saving someone. Uh-uh. God is, yeah, hmm. it's, it's a killer song. Uh, we've been chewing on it the last couple of weeks. Yeah, definitely text me that. Text. I haven't heard that one. I know the Israel Houghton, uh, the old song. Turn it around, open the windows of heaven. You know that one? <laughs> I don't. You share that one with me, I'll share mine with you. Are you, you, you were doing praise worship Wednesday night, weren't you? Yeah, I was, in, praise I was in praise scene practice on Wednesday night. Don't tell nobody, though. Don't tell nobody. <laughs> Uh, it's public net it's public record I now know. you're on the show it's all public record i love i'm telling you worship is like my heart love language like it's just like yeah i just love worshiping the lord especially through song yeah i can worship yeah. him any kind of way but through song especially all right and listen i know people are going through stuff but that's when you're down when you're down to nothing god is up to something when you start praising him blessings come down help is on the way and a lot of times it comes through the form of people like you in the Christian Legal Society. Absolutely. Talk about how people can support you guys and get involved. Yes, I definitely will talk about it. Um, Christian Legal Society, we are a nationwide nonprofit, right? We have members all across the nation. Um, if you're an attorney, you can join one of our attorney chapters and kind of hang out with them, fellowship, get some good uh, Bible study, lunchtime, continual legal education, all that good stuff. Um, if you're not an attorney, you can still um, support Christian Legal Society. So there are four ways you can support Christian Legal Society that I can think of right off the top of my head. Uh, you can join as a member. Anyone can join as a member um, as long as you agree with our statement of faith um, of Christianity. Uh, so you can be a lawyer, a law student, a professional, a pastor, whomever. Uh, so number one, you can join as a member. Number two, uh, you can volunteer at any of our Christian legal aid clinics as a lawyer or a non-lawyer. We're always looking for non-lawyers to come alongside our attorneys to um, to serve the poor or the uh, the needy. That's number two. Number three, you can donate. You can donate in any way, shape, form you would like to. There are so many different ways you can donate financially um, through uh, online. You can donate. Uh, you can even what is the what is they what do they call that? I don't know. You you can do an endowment. You can do all kinds of financial yeah. investments. It's just interesting how um, donations can be set up these days. Um, yeah, estate planning. You guys are ECFA. I want to throw that out there in Charity Navigator. ECFA is the uh, a seal of good stewardship, financial stewardship. It stands for Evangelical Council for Financial Accountability. Yes, that the monies that are that are donated. 90% plus go to the programs. Nobody's getting paid right. uh, buku bucks, uh, you know, industry standards. Usually most people get paid less than what that job would get paid in the real world. So it's very uh, true. It's yeah. ministry. It's um, a form of serving. Yeah. So thank you for pointing that out, Pastor Chuck. We are ECFA. And the fourth way, which I probably shouldn't have put last, but is definitely everybody can do this. Pray. Pray for us. Yeah. Pray that God will continue to use us, expand us, grow us in the legal profession, uh, in the marketplace, throughout Christianity, um, all three branches of government as we stand to do the work of the Lord um, in Christian legal aid, in the Center for Law and Religious Freedom, on law school campuses, and throughout our communities. Yeah. Amen. Uh, I, You know, the power of prayer, I still think we underestimate mm-hmm. it a lot. But um, talking with God about stuff, he'll whisper in your ear what your part is and what your part isn't. So sometimes, you know, we need to be led. But advocacy, again, prayer advocates, prayer intercessors, intercessory prayer. That is a specific ministry within the body of Christ. And again, this is spiritual warfare. Uh, if the enemy's out there, you know, seeking to 
kill, steal, and destroy um, your life, your family, your business. Um, we live in a cancel culture kind of world. Um, this is where uh, those battles are won on our knees. And then you get your day in court, you know, if you need to. Yeah. So, so appreciate what you guys are doing. Thank you. And final question before we close in prayer. Anything else God put on your heart this morning? I don't know. This is like my my pastor always says, we're prophetic people. We just be picking up stuff. So I'm going to just let it settle, simmer a little bit. I think I'm good. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Well, let's do it. Let's pray. Ladies first. All right. Ladies. Yeah. Dear Lord, thank you so much for this good Friday. <laughs> This Friday that you've given us another day on this earth to minister your gospel, to share with your people. I pray that every person that hears this message will be blessed. I pray that you will continue to um, expand our ministries, that we will go into the world and make disciples. Thank you for Pastor Chuck and the vision you've given him with Overcomers TV. Thank you for Christian Legal Society and the vision that you have given us many, many years ago that we are implementing in the earth to advance your gospel and your kingdom. Lord, we just pray that you will continue to use your people, um, the believers, those of us who believe in Jesus Christ, use us in the marketplace, use us on the seven mountains, help us to rise up and be bold and courageous, but also help us to walk in love as we minister your gospel to bring healing to the, your people, um, all of those uh, believers and unbelievers, as we heard earlier in the word, that we will be fishers of men uh, and that we would understand the calling that you have on our life in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. I thank you, Lord, for Okita. Thank you for her heart. And again, raising her up for such a time as this and her team, uh, the staff, um, the volunteers, the donors that have contributed. We do pray for more partnerships within the body of Christ that we would just, again, lay it at your feet, all of our time, our treasure, our talents, and allow you to lead God and direct for your kingdom's sake, for your glory, that we might be a blessing to others. And uh, may we be doers of Psalms 41, 1 through 3 today. Lord, may, may we consider the poor you put in our path and do what we can. I know we're not everything to everybody, but we're something to someone today. So help us to stay in our lane and do what you called us to do according to your gifts and your power, your Holy Spirit that's working through us. All for your glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Girl, this is almost like more like church than it was a broadcast. <laughs> we are the church. Didn't you say that earlier? <laughs> yes, ma'am. That's good stuff. Well, I'm always hoping that somebody who maybe doesn't feel comfortable going to the church hears a couple of Christians talk about some things and say, you know what? I need to go get back plugged in. I've yeah. been I've been the prodigal son way too long. So hopefully somebody hears something and says, you know, I need to go back and Family reunion this Sunday. Go 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 meet your family. They've been missing yes. you. You've been missing them. Amen? Yes, that's so Amen. true. God is always there, ready to welcome us with open arms. Amen. Good stuff. We enjoy your weekend, you and um, we'll uh, pray about the focus for the last Friday of next month. Sounds good. This bump, close Thanks, it out. Bam. <laughs> Bam. Oh, let me do the left hand so they can see. Tune in to Overcomers TV on your favorite app or streaming platform. It's time to overcome. In 1953, Jack Drake set up a borrowed tent on donated land just east of the Navajo Nation. There, Four Corners Home for Children was born. Since then, over 2,000 children have passed through our doors and there's always room for more. Our House of Hope offers shelter to children in crisis. The House of Faith is a long-term home where children can grow and thrive. Our House of Grace provides life skills training for older teenagers as they work toward independence. The Four Corners Academy for Excellence provides educational opportunities in an environment conducive to learning. Navajo Nation Outreach provides for the needs of the Navajo people. Addiction recovery, food distribution, providing Bibles in the Navajo language. Four Corners Home for Children, serving in Navajo land since 1953, a place for children to call home.